Welcome back, everyone. My name is Dan Vega, Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. We've been talking a lot lately about building GraphQL APIs, but what happens if you're in an application and you need to call a GraphQL API? How do you do it? That's exactly what we'll cover here today. Before we get started, I just wanna let you know that I have a free newsletter that you can find at this link or the link in the description below. But this is a weekly newsletter that I send out, again, for free that just has tons of information about whatever I'm working on and whatever I found interesting on the web. So please do me a favor, support this channel by signing up for that free newsletter. With that, let's go ahead and dive into the browser here. So to call a GraphQL API, we're going to need one. So I found a free one here at countries.trevorblades.com. And this query, as you can see, there is a countries query. And we can get a whole bunch of information out of that, but I chose to kind of slim it down to the name, emoji, currency, code, and capital. If we run that, you can see that we have a list of countries here that we can now use in our application with all of that information. If you scroll down, you'll start to see that some of these are null, so currency, capital. So we will want to guard against those nulls as well. But this is the API that we're going to consume in our application. So how do we create an application? Uh, like always, we're going to head over to start.spring.io. So we're going to pick a project here. We're going to use Maven as our build tool. We're going to use Java as the language. We'll use the latest version of Spring Boot, which at this time is 3.0.5. We're going to fill in some metadata. I'm going to say dev.danvega. I'll just call this countries. And we are going to use uh, Java 17. That's fine. That's the latest LTS. You could use Java 20 if you want. So we're going to need a few dependencies. We're going to build a web application. We're actually going to build, uh, we're going to use Spring Data JDBC because we want to take these countries, uh, once we load them, and store them in a database. We don't want to keep calling this uh, GraphQL API over and over again. For that, I'm going to need a database. I'm going to use just an H2 in-memory database. Uh, with that, you can go ahead and generate the application. It will download a zip file. You could open it up in your favorite ID. Mine happens to be IntelliJ Ultimate, but hey, whatever you're most productive in, that is the best ID to use. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and open that up and let's get coding. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is come in here and just rename this to application. I'm just crazy like that, so there it is. Um, I'm also gonna create a new, let's say, package. We'll create one for a model. Inside the package, I'm going to create a new record. We're going to create a record called country, and this is just going to represent a country. All the fields that we selected from the GraphQL API, those are the fields that we want in our record. So I'm going to say at ID, so this is at ID. There we go, and we are going to have an ID. We are going to have a name. We'll have the emoji, the currency, and I cannot spell, still can't. <laughs> uh, we're also gonna need the code and the capital. So that should be enough to represent a country in our system. All right, next I'll need a repository. I'm gonna create a new uh, interface. We'll call this the country repository. This is gonna be an interface and we'll put this in a repository package. And now that we have that, we can extend the uh, list and the ID type is integer. So there's our repository. Next, we're gonna create a service. So let's go ahead and create a service. We'll call this the country service. And I'm gonna put this in a package called service. And here's where we're gonna use our GraphQL client. So this service is going to reach out to the GraphQL API and return a list of countries. So how can we make this work? So we could just use a normal web client, but then we have to do a whole bunch of things with that to make everything work. So I want to use what's called the HTTP GraphQL client, and this is a part of the Spring for GraphQL dependency. So we didn't bring it in the beginning, but I just wanted to show that we could also bring it in here. So what I want to do is add a new dependency, and we'll call this Spring Boot Starter GraphQL, and that will come from org.springframework.boot. So we'll go ahead and reload those changes. So now when we're in our country service, we can say that we are going to have 
a HTTP GraphQL client, and we'll just call this GraphQL client. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a constructor here. We are gonna have no dependencies. We're gonna go ahead and create an instance of this GraphQL uh, client ourselves. So to do this, we'll need a web client, and we'll need one more dependency for that. So we know that if we're gonna use a web client, we're gonna bring in Spring Boot Starter Web Flux. All right, that is coming from there as well. So let's reload our changes. And now we can get access to a web client. So I'm gonna say web client, client is equal to web client builder. And what are we gonna build here? We're gonna build something with a base URL and the base URL is that URL that we took a look at earlier. So that is countries.trevorblades.com. And then we were gonna go ahead and build that. Now that we have a web client, we can say our GraphQL client is equal to the HTTP GraphQL uh, client.builder. And it's going to take in a client, so that our web client, and we're gonna build an instance from that. So that's kind of the boilerplate that we'll have to do to set this up, but that's it. Um, now that we have a GraphQL client, we can use that. So let's go ahead and create a method that is going to return countries. So this is actually going to return a mono, and this is going to be a list of countries. So country, and with that in place, I can say get countries. And now what I need to do is create a document. So this is gonna be that GraphQL query, the same one that we saw in the Graphical Explorer before. Little tip here in IntelliJ, you can say language is equal to GraphQL. And what that'll do is hopefully give us some uh, IntelliSense here. So we can say document is equal to, and we get to use that nice uh, triple quotes because we're here in a later version of Java. So our document is equal to a query, and this query is going to be, let's see, is this probably complaining because we haven't returned anything, that's okay. All right, countries, now I assure you, I usually get IntelliSense from this, so I'm not sure why it's not giving it to me now, but that's okay, we're gonna get the name, we're gonna get the emoji, we'll get the currency, we'll get the code, and we'll get the capital. All right, so there is, oh, that might help. I have a very big problem with spelling. <laughs> so uh, let's just do this. So if I start typing now, is it gonna come? No, still no. Okay, that's okay. I can assure you that this works. Um, I probably have not hooked up the correct config to make that work, no big deal. So now that we have our document, we can go ahead and make a call to that API using our GraphQL client. So what we're gonna say is our GraphQL client dot document. So here is our document. And we're gonna say, go ahead and retrieve. And when we get back from that, so let's jump back to the browser real quick. You can see the data that comes back from that. What we are looking for is countries. So countries is now an array of objects here. That's what we are looking for. So we are saying we want to retrieve the countries and that we want to turn into an entity list. And what are those? Those are countries. So country.class. So that is all we need. Um, so let's turn this into a var. That is going to be a mono list of country called countries. That's right. And we can go ahead and return countries. Cool, so so far, so good. We have our country service. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go in my main application class and what we're gonna do is we're going to call the country service to get all of those countries and then we're gonna use Spring Data, so we're using Spring Data JDBC to kind of load all of those countries into our database. So let's go ahead and create a bean. We'll use a command line runner here. We'll call this command line runner. And this is going to return args. 
And it looks like that. So now to make this happen, we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need the country service that we just created. We'll call that service. And the country repository, we'll call that repository. So what are we going to do with that? So what we want to get is our countries first. So let's say service.getcountries.var. What is that going to return? A mono, a list of countries. So what we want to do is nothing has actually happened yet until we subscribe to that. So I'm going to say subscribe. And in there, I'm going to say I'm going to get that response back. And when I get that response, I want to go ahead and use the repository to go ahead and let's say save all of those and we'll save those to the database. So that looks good. All right. Um, what is this complaining about? Yes, we can use a, 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 a method reference there. So that will clean that up. So once that's done, we should have all of the data in our database. Um, am I not using the service? Um, okay, good. This is this is why I love using an IDE. It tells me, hey, you forgot to do something. And we did. We forgot to say this is a service. So now that is fixed. So I'm going to make one more quick change. I'm going to come over to application.properties. I'm going to say I don't want to generate that unique name. I want to set a data source name. And we'll call this countries. And the H2 council, I want you to go ahead and enable. Uh, so with that, if we didn't make any errors, we can go ahead and run our application. And it looks like we have a small problem. No big deal. Table country was not found. Well, that is a problem, Dan. We need a country uh, table schema. No big deal. We can come over into resources, create a new file called schema.sql. I'm going to paste in some schema here so we don't have to watch me type it out. And we'll save that. And let's go ahead and rerun our application. OK, uh, no errors now. Let's go back over to the browser. And let's check out the H2 console. So we're going to check out countries. And we'll try to connect to that. And there is a country table. <clears throat> and if we run select star from country, we see all of our countries here. So awesome. That is really all I wanted to show you. Uh, let's go back and take a look at the service just so we can kind of walk through this again. Uh, we're using a web client. Uh, that is what the HTTP GraphQL client is based on. Now, if you're using something like WebSocket or RSocket, we have a client for that as well. But we're using the HTTP one in this case, and we are creating one using a builder that gets in a web client, that takes in a web client as an argument. So that's how we build the GraphQL client. Again, if you've written any tests in GraphQL, this should look pretty familiar. We're just writing a query here, and we're saying, hey, this is our document. And I want to go ahead and pass this in to our GraphQL client. Uh, we call retrieve. We turn them into entities. We turn that back. Because this is returning a mono, we then need to subscribe to that here in our application. But cool. That's really all there is to it. If you need to make a call to a GraphQL API in your Spring applications, Spring for GraphQL has a GraphQL client for you. So I hope you learned something. If you did and you found some value in this, friends, do me a huge favor. Thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding, friends.